hi guys welcome to my first youtube video i know that some of you have been waiting for this for a while so here it is first of all i would like to um, give a little introduction to myself so i am zane and you say it like mane <laughs> and i'm a big football fan and as you can see i am a liverpool fan as well uh, i come from latvia and uh, i just want to know that uh, i've been uh, following footballs for uh, football for the last three four years now so my knowledge might be uh, not the best but i yeah i say what i think and i base my opinion i try to base my opinion on facts and the things i've seen so yeah here is my first video and uh as i said it's going to be uh q and a so i've asked you to um ask me some questions and I'm gonna give my answers right now. So here it goes. What is your all-time footballing idol? Um, I would have to say Zidane because um, when I was little, uh, my mom uh, used to follow French national team. So it was her favorite team of all teams. And I remember um, this, so one summer when France was uh, playing against Italy in Euros final, I think it was, and uh, Zidane was sent uh, sent off for like uh, hitting Materazzi in the head, and I remember how gutted I was only because my mom was really gutted, and yeah, and they lost the game, and I was crying like crazy about that. Even I, even though I didn't know anything about Zidane or the French national team but yeah the older I got the more I read about him and learned about him yeah he's really all my all-time footballing idol and um, the other part of the question was who is your favorite player in Liverpool history so as I said I've been following uh, Liverpool for the last three four years so um I know our legends, but I can only base my opinion on things that I've seen. So I think my favorite player would be either Gerard, Gerard, <laughs> Gerard, tell me how you pronounce it, and Henderson. <laughs> yeah. Why Gerard and Henderson? Gerard, because he's just an icon of the club. And Henderson, because he, I think he is the heart of our club and he is so important and so influential so yeah i think those two are my favorite ones so the next question what brings you to become a liverpool fan so i think i've shared this um story before that uh, my partner is a liverpool fan and has been a liverpool fan for 20 years or something and he used to watch the games and i wasn't really interested in football so i just yeah i saw what's going on but i wasn't really interested and then we went to one pub to watch the champions league final which we lost in kiev and yeah i just loved the feeling of people cheering the team on and yeah i saw how much um how much it meant to the to the Liverpool team how upset Salah was when he got the injury and people crying because they didn't win and I was just like yeah this team is really passionate about what they're doing so the next season I started to watch uh, more games and I started to like it even more and then it turned out turned in in kind of a religion for me <laughs> so yeah and that's how it all started next question most memorable memorable moment as a fan for me personally it would be going to anfield and just for the first time and just living the experience and seeing how it is to see all the players in real life and just the buzz around anfield and everyone just wanting to go to the game and wanting wanting to get the win and just being behind the club i think all of that experience was just really really great and uh, in terms of a game which would be a most memorable moment probably is gonna be the barcelona game but it was it was just mad 
I know that I said that we were gonna win it 4-0, but like it's a tough ask to win uh, to win over Barcelona 4-0. <laughs> so yeah, but I believe that we can and we did, so that was great. So the next question is, who should we sign? I suppose this is this year. So I think uh, we can try to sign Rafinha. I think he is a really good player and I don't think he will be playing for Leeds for a long time. He will want to go to a team which can win trophies. Um, then there is Haaland or Mbappe debate. Um, we could try to sign one of these. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but we could try. And then I think a good center back uh, could be a great option because I'm not overly sure about Kabak, even though he's been playing only a couple of games. So I do have to give him more time and the benefit of the doubt. And maybe he'll get really, really good. And then we don't need a center back because we already have but Dai Gomez, Matip, and then Kabak and Philip, so and Davies. <laughs> so yeah, that's quite a lot. So if they get the experience they need, then maybe we don't need a centre back. And then I've heard some rumors rumors about Rodrigo de Paul, which could be a good option too. The next question is Holland or Mbappe? Um, I used to be more um, Team Holland because I think the Germany style of play and um, yeah, just the way how he plays is more fitted for uh, Klopp's style, like the hard metal football. I think he runs a lot. He also defends, not only runs in uh, off uh, offense. So yeah, I think for me it was at first Holland. Then I watched some more Mbappe's games and now I'm more like 60% Haaland, 40% Mbappe. I think it's still Haaland for me, but I wouldn't cry if we got either of them, <laughs> but yeah. Next question. Can one or two long-term injuries affect how Liverpool plays? or how a team plays? I think definitely yes, um, because it depends where, what is the position of the player and uh, how influential the player is when he plays. So I think for Van Dijk, he is like one of the most influential and vocal players on the pitch. So people really, really miss that and they need to find who's going to be the next leader because generally Henderson is our leader and then there is Van Dijk in the back who just yeah just puts things in order so we do need someone in the back now and we only have youngsters and players who haven't really played for us so it's a bit hard so other people have to step up and you maybe cannot play the way you played before because that player miss is missing so yeah I think one or two long-term injuries can definitely affect the way someone plays. Is calling a throw in or a corner that you know isn't yours cheating? In my opinion, no. Because uh, when they play, they're always going to say, it's my ball. They're never going to say, it's your ball. So it's not really cheating. It's like trying to mislead the ref, but the ref like 95% of the time in these situations they do know what is going on so I think that isn't cheating that's just a normal reaction to say no like the ball is mine so yeah next question why has our center back injury crisis impacted so badly did Van Dijk did more than just defend um, I think I responded to this question kind of because before because I think he's just really influential on the pitch and yes he did more than just defend he started a lot of our attacks with the, the long balls so yeah I think he did more than just defend and he's just a very very influential player and he is a leader so we miss him a lot 
and that's why we've been impacted so badly but i think it's not only him because when we lost him to the injury we still played well and we didn't even concede a lot of goals but it was just injury after injury after injury and three like long-term injuries and then every match day there was a new injury so i think it's not only van dyke's injury it's how many injuries we've had this season that has impacted us so yeah At first I was a fan of the VAR because I thought it's going to help referees to make the right decisions but after seeing the way how they make the decisions I think it has made football worse though I really hate those armpit offsides like if it's that small margin and the landsman didn't see it just, just, get, just give it I don't see a reason to draw lines and moreover Every time they draw the line, it's from different parts of the body or from an arm with, what, with which you can't even score a goal or just some really, really ridiculous decisions. So I think they need to do a proper training for the refs who are operating VAR and only then we can talk about implementing it because it needs to be implemented properly and the decisions need to be consistently the same. But that's my opinion. <laughs> Next question, are referees biased when it comes to certain clubs? <sighs> Probably some people <laughs> will not like this answer, but I think some are, I think for sure they are. Because if you, you, if you are a referee in the league for so long, you are a British person. And every sing almost every single British person has their favorite club. And even if you like, if when you work, you have your favorite, for example, co-worker, and then somehow you just, the same as for referee, maybe because they've been treated better by some team or something like that, I don't know. And they just sometimes maybe even subconsciously prefer the other team. I know that Premier League try to not put like referees who like a team in influential games but i think some of them are really biased and they're biased towards uh the biggest clubs i would think and sorry if i say bias funny or wrong because i don't know how to say it properly but hope you had a good laugh um If you could have one Liverpool player to be sold back, who would it be? Um, it's between Suarez and Coutinho. I think they are two very influential players. Currently, we miss the creativity. And yeah, we miss actually scoring goals. So that's something that Suarez could do and Coutinho could break those low blocks, which all teams like to play uh against us so yeah i think those two i would definitely buy back or one of them so what is your starting 11 now so with all the injuries so this is first of march so we don't have uh henderson so van dijk gomez matip well we kind of don't have jota i don't know if we can count that we have him now but yeah this would be mine Allison would be in goal i know that uh, adrian did, uh, had a really good game but ali is a number one he is the number one goalkeeper in the world so of course he has to be in my starting 11. then trent alexander arnold kabak phillips uh, robertson genie john santiago with the possibility for kate to come on mane bobby and salah and then Bobby can be substituted uh, by Shota if he's fit. Next question. Will missing top four make players leave? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but I think no, because 
most of our uh, influential players still have contracts in place and I think they will honor them and I think they love the club and they know what is going on they understand the situation I think better than we do so I think they 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 will stay all of them are pas passionate about the club for example I think Salah and Mane are really passionate about the club they're just not really like great in showing that kind of emotion like for example Robo is when talking about it so I think they will stay and we will show everyone next season what we're really about again Should two from Davies, Quebec, Phillips be the starting centre back pair while Hendo and Fab play in midfield? It's a bit hard to say now because we don't have Fab or Henderson, but um, if we would have them both, at first I would probably play Hendo in the back, uh, Hendo in midfield, and then Fab in the back with one of them. And potentially when Kabak and Davies and Phillips are more like into the rhythm, I could play two of them together and then put Fab and Hendo in midfield where they actually belong. Would Liverpool go back to back three formation? Potentially for a couple of games or in a game and a half time where, where they feel like they need the extra um, defender in the back. But I don't see it as a very likely opportunity because we're more of a offensive team. So I don't think that's a long term uh, solution. But as I said, maybe for 45 minutes or one game or something like that. But in general, no, I don't think so. Favorite song in Anfield, and am I crazy when I go to Anfield singing the songs and being crazy about Rev's decision? Oh, <laughs> if you read my tweets and stuff, then you probably know that I go kind of crazy about Rev's decisions, and I'm the one who's singing the songs and yeah, screaming and stuff like that. So yeah, I go crazy. And favorite song in Anfield. Of course, you never walk alone. And I really like Bobby's song. So yeah, those two are my all-time favorites. Then the last question is, how many players will leave Liverpool? So I think from uh, starting 11, no one will probably leave. I don't see it happening. Um, Origi will leave. Like he's done a lot for the club. He has scored very important goals, but I think his time is up. Um, Shakiri might leave. That is an opportunity, even though like the thing with Shakiri is is his inconsistency, and I know it's been caused by injuries as well. But some games he's really really good, and in some games he just nowhere to be seen. I know how it is normally, but I think the dip is just a bit too big, so he might leave as well. I've read some things about Ox that potentially um, he might be let go because when you think about our midfield when everyone is fit there's Hendo, Fab, Thiago, Jeannie, Jones, who did I forget, Milner, yeah so it's really hard, Keita, <laughs> yeah Keita so it's seven kind of first team players and it's um, yeah kind of hard to get in there if you're not performing um, in training sessions and um, in game week so yeah it might be Ox as well and potentially might be Adrian as well with Kelleher coming into contention and just showing how good he is so yeah I think those players could go but yeah this is it for the video hope you liked it enjoyed it um, if you didn't I'm sorry <laughs> if you did <laughs> then good um, yeah subscribe to my channel like put on the notifications if you want to know when the next video is coming up and thank you for watching